Hi, Martin here. Uh, what we're going to work on today is putting a larger throttle body on our Jeeps, on our 4.0s. Especially if you've got a stroked 4.5, 4.6, or 4.7 stroker Jeep motor. And uh, I really believe that's necessary because, um, for one, here you got this stroke motor. And it, let's say you're running a 4.6 or 4.7. And if you look at a typical 4.7 liter motor, it has around a 65 millimeter throttle body on it right from the factory. So why shouldn't we be running a 65 millimeter throttle body, right? Um, now, here I've got a bored out stock throttle body. Um, and you can get it to 60 millimeters, maybe 61. Um, I've done quite a bit, few mods to it. Here I've reduced the shaft diameter by flattening it out. On this side, I've actually removed the uh, half of the shaft. And it is to 60 millimeters. Now, what I got here is a 65 millimeter. And we're going to stay in the Chrysler family because this came right off a 4.7 liter V8 Chrysler motor that you can find on your Grand Cherokees and your uh, Dodge trucks. And now it is different. <laughs> As you can see, it's got a very odd looking three bolt pattern where we have a four. It's a much wider bolt pattern. Now, the one thing I like about it, it's got the idle air control valve. You got your throttle position sensor right there, which is great. So these two things that we've already got on our throttle body is here already. Um, now, the one difference would be the, the linkage for the uh, your throttle cable and your kick down cable and cruise. And what I'm going to do is I got a shaft I pulled out of another throttle body right here. And I'm probably going to start by grinding this down and adapting this piece onto here and then probably having to do some cutting here and there to make it all work. And I think that's going to be the biggest adjustment to this particular throttle body. And then we're going to have to end up building an adapter plate that's going to go to this bolt pattern to that bolt pattern. And I'm going to try to keep it down to three quarters of an inch thick. Uh, this one here is for a Ford, but you get the idea this one's just shy of one inch. I'm going to be sitting up there about like that. Okay, I got this uh, clamping device. I'm just going to grind this off right here, trying to get this off of the uh, shaft, off the throttle shaft. If I just put it in here loosely, the vise like this, I'm going to take a punch and see if we can drive that through there. she goes. We're down. Okay. This part right here. that part removed. Okay, now with that piece of plastic removed, what we're going to do here, the next cut, I'm going to take this, this would be the the throttle stop, not for the, for the idle position, okay? 
and also holds the spring for the throttle. Um, and then we're going to relocate that. In fact, what we're going to do, where the spring did hook on right here, we're going to pull it back to this location and reuse. we're going to use this right here. And we'll get more into that in a bit. Now, first I'm going to cut all this off. And when I replace this piece, I'm going to do on this piece of metal, the one that we're using for the uh, XJ, this is the actual throttle piece here. I took off this backside piece and bent this out a little bit. And we're going to weld a tab off of here. That's going to be our new throttle stop. All right, with that chunk of metal gone, move on to the next part. All right now, if you look careful right there, you can see looks just like that. I ground that totally flat. What we're going to do is place this exactly on the same spot. And then, because we know this is the center of the shaft, this was the center, we place this exactly where it was, and all, the, all your pivot points are going to be the same. And I'm going to weld that right onto there. All right. Got it welded on, right there. I think that turned out real nice. Okay, that hole I just drilled right there. What we're doing is relocating the, the spring. It used to lay down in here, but since we lost, since we don't have our spring location up here, and we're moving it back, I didn't want to over tighten the spring and have too much pedal effort and all that, I'm trying to keep everything the way it was. And I'll show you how that comes out. So just got to add a hole right there. It doesn't necessarily have to go all the way through either. I got the spring on here, and I'm ready to pretty much put this back in. And I'm going to show you what that uh, little hole was all about. If you watch real carefully, you got that hole right there. It goes in the hole like that. Okay, then come back. Attach just like that. Okay. We'll get our butterfly in here. So sweet. Okay, got the butterfly reinstalled. And nice close up shot here of the spring. That goes in there. We utilized this uh, throttle hookup that was on the Durango as a place to hook the spring. I mean, that looks factory. Now, right here is where we're going to be hooking up our Jeep throttle. And you can see there's probably a little clearance issue there. So we're just going to notch this down right in this area right there. Now, you all, so if you can see right in here, this looks like a ground down some. Right there. And that is for that to clear. And this is this piece right here. This is going to be our new throttle stop. Okay, now if you recognize this little piece from earlier, we had cut this off of here. This was basically the the stop for the kind of the idle position, but there's an adjustment screw right here set from the factory, all right? So, we're taking that piece, we're going to do a little reshaping, and it's going to get welded on right here. I got this uh, little piece of metal all kind of made up, and that's going to go right there, okay? 
Now, I went ahead and backed that set screw flush, backed it out, and it does take one of them security type torxes with the little pin in the middle of it. Okay. Now I'm going to add this washer. This is only so we do have to bring the set screw up a little bit. Now I'm going to grab a clamp and clamp this piece on here so it's nice and flush and square and then we're just going to throw a bead right down in here. Okay? Okay, if you look closely, I got the just this little C clamp holding that in there. I got a, that little washer in there just for now. This just gives us an air gap. So, and we'll be throwing a weld right on there. Okay, you can see I got my weld right there. And you, if you look carefully, right in there, there's an actual air gap I move, after removing that washer. So now I'll bring that set screw up and adjust that butterfly properly. When you bring this up to a wide open throttle, there's your, where it hits the factory, stop right there and now it'll be touching here where it did during the factory as well. Okay, I uh, got a chunk of aluminum here. This is a 5x5, five five, 1 inch thick. I also purchased a 5x3 quarter inch thick and this one's 12 inches I believe long. long you know, it's big enough to do two plates. So I may use this also. We'll see. Um, I did go ahead and machine this groove out of it and that is for when this sits on here that piece of linkage right there is going to clear when it's pivoted. Okay? Um, I went ahead and made all the uh, Markings, get a shot of that. I got the uh, center, I've got the four holes marked for the original throttle body, and uh, those will be drilled and then also will countersink the bolt heads into the aluminum block so they'll be perfectly flush. And then I've got the one hole marked for this bolt right there. And uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead, drill these, countersink them, bolt this down. I'm also going to go ahead and drill and tap this one. And then bolt it into place and then drill the other two. Okay, I just uh, bolted this back on. Just want to test fit it, make sure everything lines up good. Now I'm going to drill the plate just deep enough for these bolts to countersink them so they're flush to this aluminum. Okay, I've set up my drill press here so it stops at the proper depth.
I got the four holes countersunk in there. As you can see, they're definitely they're flush. Uh -huh. So. so I can see already that this is going to fit well. These Allen bolts are going down in there nice. Okay, the next step is to place the uh, throttle body on here. Like I've already got the one hole. I'm going to go ahead and drill and tap that. And these are M6 by 1.0 metric bolts. Okay. Okay, I got the one bolt tapped and installed here. I got this uh, throttle body. This one here is a 65 mil, but I got all the lines in here and I can tell I got this thing exactly centered. Now, what I was going to do is I took a bolt and ground a nice tip to it. Now I was going to set it right in here. Like that. Come over here. The other side. This side's a little weird. Got this slot here, but. Yeah, I guess some wiggle room. Yep. All right. I'll uh, unbolt this, drill the other two holes, and tap them. And you have your electric hookup for your eye layer control, your throttle position sensor. None of that will change, and you'll have enough room here for your. Uh, vacuum brake booster right down on there now the only thing I got to add yet is the map sensor which I'm going to mount back here and um, I'm actually going to cut out a little notch just like it is on the factory one like that and then put a small vacuum hose connection on there so, right there you can see where I'm going to do that. And the reason I, I'm not going to place it up front here, one, I got this bolt going right through the center of it. I could probably go off to the side a little bit, but you know what? I know I can put it back here and make it work. And then the only other thing that's left is to drill the hole in the center of the adapter plate. One thing about it, it does fill up with these uh, chunks of aluminum, like that one right there. Ta-da! All right, I cleaned the piece up a little bit. I haven't done anything else to it. Come in here. Look at that. 68.55. Right in there, 68.64. I mean, you can't beat that. That is really good. So that's going to turn out nice, I believe. I do need to... Uh, 
just right here on the edge in the bottom here it did flare out a little bit we'll smooth that off and you'll be good all right the next thing we got to do is we're going to take the hole saw and we'll just be able to place it right in here on a drill and then cut out this ridge we got here we got to match it up all right here we go Okay, now one of the other things I need to do, um, this is the cold air idle port right here. This is the valve itself. So we got to be able to get the air that's coming through here to get into our intake manifold. Um, what I've done here is just take some silicone and I put it on here as a for a temp plate and then just pushed it down in exactly where I wanted it and it you know leaves an impression here and I took a uh, scribe and just scribed a line and what we're going to try to do is uh, I might mill out a little section right in here or another option would be to remove a little bit of material right here and this air could pass from here right into the intake that would probably be the easiest solution but I might try this other one just because alright what I got here I got the uh, one inch spacer that I originally started with right here got the hole drilled in it I uh, milled out this section right here and installed a one eighth inch barb fitting. This is a male to male fitting. Right there. And then I on that one inch one I had to actually mill out this section here. So when I installed it it uh, would clear these parts of the uh, map sensor and here's where I went to the three quarter inch one and I have it all milled, drilled and you got the barb fitting in. Now when drilling the hole for this you're going to want to probably start with a smaller drill bit or measure properly so what I did is I got a drill bit that was slightly smaller than this. I think I got even used a numbered drill bit. Um, and then, I mean, you drill clear through the adapter, plate of you're course. tapping this into place. So you do want a real good snug fit. And then, uh, using, let's say, a brass punch or a softer, don't you could use a steel hammer, but be very careful not to mushroom this out. And right here, I thought I recorded it, milling this all out. Turned out really nice. Um, and this is for the idle air control valve. Okay, now finally, this is, would be the finished product of the adapter plate. We got a finished throttle body ready to go on. Now I'll be next. All right, I'll start by uh, removing a few things here. And of course, that would be the, your air intake. <clears throat> It's 
simply unplug your map sensor and you'll need to unplug your throttle position sensor and your cold your idle air control valve we'll need to remove this one vacuum hose here because that's the one that's going to get covered up we'll put a plug in there okay remove this uh, fitting here Now we want to remove the throttle cable, kick down, and the cruise control cables. Okay. And all that leaves here is to remove the throttle body itself. And we will have to also remove the uh, bracket for the throttle cable. Alright, ta da! Okay, now 10 millimeter socket. Remove the three bolts that are holding on the bracket. The one's a little hard to see. There we go. Okay. And set that aside. Okay, I'm going to start off by putting a plug in here. And then we're going to check to see if this is a little higher than the, uh, the mating surface here. It might be by a hair bit. Alright, I went ahead and uh, checked this across here and it is absolutely perfect. So when they machine this surface, they must have machined right straight across. Put a little uh, Teflon tape on the plug and I did run a tap down in there to uh, get get it down in there a little bit further. Not good. When I had that map sensor on here flipped around like it is on uh, in the stock location or the stock orientation, I couldn't slide it underneath here. It would hit the bottom side of the fuel rail. So what I've done is I've uh, flipped it around. What I've done here is I, I flipped it around had to redrill a couple holes and then I had to mill off just a little bit here so that the connector could slip by that there. So now I'll be able to plug it in. Okay, and that's gonna sit approximately right where's that one hole? Right there. All right, what I got here is I shoved quite a few rags down in here. I don't want any shavings to get into the intake or down the intake runners. Um, then I applied a bit of grease just to kind of capture the uh, shavings. And then afterwards, we'll pull it out and uh, I still use a shop vac in here. And Okay, here we go. As you can see, there's a lot of shavings in there. Um, I'm going to probably grab a shop back and try to suck all this out of here. Alright, I 
took it, I've taken the original gasket, laid it on here, and then I took a, a Dremel with a just the sanding drum on it, and then ran it around in here until it became the gasket became the same size. Okay, that trimmed up real nice then. When I'm putting the uh, throttle body on here, the eye layer control valve, I thought it was going to clear real well because it would for the uh, brake booster vacuum hose. And it actually seems a bit crowded. It uh, gets up against it pretty good. As you can see, I can't. I'd have to really fudge it over there. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to try removing this one, and I got another one here, which actually was down on here. It was right there, um, and it angled out like this, and then this hooked up. And I thought, well, that's silly. Just put the a straight one, that one I in took there. out of here and uh, put that straight one in. I'm going to use here. thinking cut this hose short like that that hooks up there and I think we're gonna be okay oh yeah okay I just cut it about two inches of hose off there now I'm probably just gonna apply silicone on here thin coat and because they don't actually make a gasket for this when you take this off your your donor vehicle what it is it's an actual o-ring that's built into the uh, intake manifold okay it might be a little hard to see but I got a thin layer of silicone applied to it I'll go ahead and install this Okay, for the uh, one vacuum hose, it goes to the valve cover, or your PVC line, I guess. It, I hooked it right there to the in, to the new throttle body, which was the one that we plugged over here. Okay, I just slid a rubber hose right over that plastic one and slid it right on there and worked out good. Okay, then hook. Go ahead and hook up your electric connections again. You cannot get them mixed now up. Get your throttle cables hooked up. I already got the throttle cable hooked up. Here is the cruise control. It's very easy. Just, just like that. And then the uh, TV cable or kick down cable. This one you have to readjust. Pretty easy thing to do. Push that button in. Pull this back. See how that cable slid in. All you got to do is have that when you got that back now just run the throttle to a full throttle position and you're going to see that ratchet back out right there. Now it is set. All right I've got the uh, this is a uh, turbo quality 90 it uh, has a three and a quarter inch inside diameter with a three and a half inch outside or inside diameter on this side. Um, I had to cut off quite a bit of the length, 
because I got to keep this slammed down on top of the valve cover to have the hood I did clearance. have to add a uh, three quarter inch spacer. There's a couple of them, one here and one back here. We're ready to fire this thing up. All right, running pretty good. Took it out for a drive. It seemed pretty impressive.